I'm going to flash through some of these slides then tonight. That way, we just move down. To make an announcement about this particular show, uh, coming up, the next wood carving show and exposition competition is taking place in Waterloo, Emmanuel Life Financial Center, which is Rim Park, and just north of Waterloo. And uh, the wood art in the cities is the part where most of the carvers with TNCC or others that are involved in just caricatures and whatever will do their entries there. But it's the Nationals wood carving uh, for birds and wildfowl, etc. You can see it on their website when you look on to see all that's involved. But it's a great time. There'd be quite a few people there. And the people wood art in the cities is the name of the part of that's not the wildfowl. But uh, as we're together at that time, uh, one of the things Zenon says he loves having us there because we draw people in. <clears throat> anyway, that's where we're at tonight. So if I go down here for a moment, I'm going to ask what's on the bench. If I get this right, you go down. There's three of us working, John, Paul, myself in the middle, and Mark on the right. Quite a few years ago, actually. I don't know if you remember that, I, I actually was doing something like that back a long time ago. I cut my grandfather's favorite chair, which was not really the coolest thing to do. So here we have our John. Would you like to explain a little bit what you have here? Hello. There we are. There you go. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I've, I've been carbon for a couple of years, and uh, I reach out to, I watch you guys for, I've watched you guys' YouTube channel for a while, and uh, you guys explain things a lot different than other people and really got into depth, and I liked how you, uh, how John and Mark and you guys did the head separate sometimes and the bodies, and I reach out to John and uh, ask him some questions, and he told me I ought to join your guys' Zoom meeting, but uh, the three heads right there, that's in the block of uh, the two by two, the three faces. Uh, that was my, uh, some of my first faces that I did. And I think I did those in uh, October of uh, last year. And then uh, I've started doing more. I'm just trying, I just love carving and, and uh, I just like doing it. And I, I, I talked to John a lot. He's helped me a lot, and I appreciate that. <laughs> and I've learned a lot watching you guys' YouTube channel. I really like how you guys explain stuff, and it's it's been real enjoyable. Super. Thank okay. you, John. What do you, you need to tell us where you're from or where you're situated, though? I, I'm I'm in uh, I'm in the uh, Indiana, United States. I'm in Indiana, uh, Mitchell, Indiana. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, got a collection there. John, have you got a comment you'd like to, not John, but uh, John Paul, would you say? I'm just it? saying that he's got a really good collection there. I, <laughs> I've been uh, helping him out lately and uh, I see a big improvement already. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It's quite a variety of personnel and his characters there. For Thank sure. you. Thank you. Yeah, John, that's a pretty good collection you got there. Thanks. So I have got this Baz there tonight. No, he's not making it tonight. Okay, well, tell us a little bit about this, because I think you've been involved with him. Uh, I, I, I don't know. What, uh, he went, I know he went on a, a course. And he took, he went on a course for that type of uh, hair, or not the hair, the straw, how to make that. And I know it's a, like a V tool, and then you super glue it. And once it's all, you just keep on pushing that V tool uh, to make that straw, and it looks really, it looks amazing. And then you super glue it all and hardens it up, hardens it up, and it's an amazing effect. So tell me, is that an, an extra block attached to the head or the hands, or is that before you, you when you cut it no, out? It's just uh, one piece of wood, and then where the hands are and where the hair is, that's just they don't they don't carve it; they just block it out, and then just keep on uh, V tooling it, and uh, that's what you get—the effect you get. It doesn't this this break off or fall off when you have to manipulate and move it around? 
No, no. Once you super glue it, it's hard as a rock. Do you mean you super glue that in, or how do you, how do you what do you mean by that? Super, just uh, douse it with super glue. You oh, wet it like with super glue on the straw. On the straw. Okay. See, it's a different color. It's, yeah, it gets a little darker. Yeah. Now you shouldn't have to paint it then either, because it's supposed to be straw color, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Okay. Any questions about that for for John? Or comments? I'm get, I guess uh, ba Bass is going to have a uh, doing an interview next month. He was supposed to do it this month, but he, he's got to do it next month. He's going to do it next month. So he's going to have to talk and explain everything, how it's done next month. Okay, great. Well, then the next we've got up here is Sue. Miss Sue. Hi. Get you coming somewhere, sir. There we go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I don't have a lot here. I have, uh, haven't been doing a ton of carving lately. We've been uh, quite busy with our learning program at the, uh, at the Ottawa club. So I've uh, kind of let some of my carving go to the wayside a little bit, but uh, that little guy there is, is just a little fisherman. He's, he's about two and maybe a bit um, inches high carved out of basswood. He's kind of a one knife project in that, one knife, but I did also use a micro V tool just to get in around that uh, mustachey beard area. So, yeah, so that's it for him. Nice paint and, job. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, he's painted with uh, with acrylics, and uh, it's they're down to a wash, but uh, yeah. And this is another one, <laughs> a little woodsman kind of guy that I did. He's a little bit taller, probably about three inches tall. And uh, he's another one knife project with, uh, again, the same micro tool to uh, to do that uh, um, mustache combination beard. Um, I find sometimes doing them even with the thinnest of blades when you're doing it there, it's pretty easy to take a chunk out and it's hard to fix that because it is a very small area. So that's uh, that's him. And he's also painted with acrylics. I um, was watching somebody on um, um, Instagram who's been doing just some silent <coughs> videos on mixing paint and uh so I've been trying some of that, just, you know, mixing some different colors and that sort of thing. And that was the, uh, this was the result of it here, this, the colors on this guy. Nice effect. And no, no bleeding. It looks, it looks a really good job. Nice painting. Nice paint job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, John, I'm wondering if that, uh, the method that uh, Baz had on his carving would work for a mustache. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The V2. Yeah. Yeah, it will. You wouldn't paint it though, would you? Oh, I guess you could. It doesn't matter. Like you, you can paint it or not. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Once you uh, seal it with the super glue, and uh, then you can paint and do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's Sue's one more for you. Yeah, that's just a little guy that was in the uh, latest um, wood carving illustrated. Um, it's just a little one knife project. Sometimes when we give the introduction to um, the carving courses at our club, we're looking for a, a simple project that they could do during the, um, you know, towards the end, the last two thirds of the class. And uh, we look at um, sometimes trying to find something that is limited strictly to a knife and a V tool because those are the tools we talk about the most with rank beginners and it also gives this one I found gave them a little opportunity or will give them a little opportunity to round things off um, as it turned out we ended up doing mushrooms instead just so that they didn't have to get into the detail but anyway it was a fun project. I enjoyed it. It was in the magazine and uh, it's fun because you can make it any size you want. And it's, it's a true one knife. This is actually done with just one knife, no V tool, but it was fun. Right. Nice and clean, nice clean cuts. Very Thank sharp you. knife. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to, yeah, I like to sharpen. So I think I'm one of those people. I don't think there's a lot out there that like to, but I enjoy it. So yeah. <laughs> Your photography is really good. You're taking a picture oh, in the thank background. thank you. Yeah, that's... Really, that's uh, that really stands out. Thank you. 
Yeah, that's the the they spot found. where I walk the dog. It's down by just behind <laughs> my place here. So yeah. <laughs> Now, Sue, yeah. you mentioned that uh, you're in Ottawa, I think, right? I am, yes. You mentioned about the learning program. What What is that? Um, it's uh, it's part of the um, Udaway Woodcarvers. Um, it's, uh, it's a program, actually. I launched the learning program back in, I think it was 2016. And, uh, and I was still working at the time, so it was hard to really devote a ton of time uh, of uh, resources to it. And then we kind of lost a lot of steam, of course, during the pandemic days, but uh, we decided to really try to uh, get it back on track this year. I'm, I'm the learning coordinator again. Um, and uh, so I, uh, um, I said, you know what, we're gonna put some real effort behind it and get some courses out there so that we can attract beginners because we found when we were doing demo days like at farmers markets and uh, places like that, that we had a lot of people that were interested but didn't know where to go to get started. So um, our term, this, this term that we're in right now, basically it's, it's from September to the, uh, the first week of June. And I started again with the um, the programs in October, and in this term we did two introduction to learn uh, to carving courses, one pyrography course, uh, carving a simple snowman, which allowed the beginners to build on their their skills. Um, carve your own study stick, um, a two weekend session of carving uh, relief carving a flower arrangement and uh, one on sharpening. So that was our our uh, slate of courses and they were well attended. Um, you know, we try to find something that's of interest to everybody and solicit input from people. What, what would you like to do? What would you like to mm -hmm. see next? And the courses are uh, given by our more senior members in the, uh, in the club. Um, and they generally try to pick something that, you know, they really enjoy. Um, and excel at to uh, to give the courses. Now, you good. speak about these people. How old would they be? Or what's the age range? Are these young people or old people or in between? We're finding that we're starting to attract some younger people now. Um, typically, uh, we've we've kept it to people over eight over the age of eighteen, just for uh, you know for insurance reasons. But uh, we did drop that back a little bit. And uh, so it's, we've had one young guy and his dad, um, and I think the young man was about 14 that came to one of the first beginner, uh, the intro to carving. Um, but right now what I'm finding is, uh, if I was a guessing person, um, a lot of the people that we're seeing that are coming in right now are probably in the mid 30 um, range and up. And uh, and they're always given on a weekend uh, so that people can come to the courses. Um, yeah. Now, at Whittling Way, or the I should say the the Kitchener Waterloo's um, the company that sells the carving supplies. Chipping away. Sitting, Chipping yeah, away. Yeah. away is, she said that the most number of new people or new new people or people buying carving equipment, etc., are younger adults. Yeah, That's good. Yeah, yeah. It's so the, uh, thing, so. the other thing that happened, I guess, when talking to your president, new president there, he said that yeah. your group in Ottawa lost a lot of people attending the shows, or attending your clubs during the COVID times. We yeah. did. Um, we did. I think uh, they were sort of at that point where maybe coming out to the meetings was um, begin, you know, getting to be a bit of a struggle from a mobility standpoint because we had a number of uh, uh, you know, older members. And I think that uh, when they stopped, it was really hard for them to get going again, mm -hmm. um, to get out to the meetings. But uh, we've tried to change it up at the monthly meetings now where instead of just making it administrative, we uh, have a series of workshops and uh, so we'll have like maybe three tables, each table led by a um, uh, a member and just a small project going at each table. So people bring in a few tools and, 
and away we go at the uh, about the second half of the meeting. So we get about an hour, a little bit better than an hour's worth of carving in there as well. No oh, super. Yeah, and then we get them to bring the stuff back for show and tell the following month. And uh, yeah. Well, thank you so much for that. Oh, well, uh, you're welcome. We Enjoy. have another uh, presenter here, James Richardson. Uh, would you come on and tell us a little bit of what you have here? Interest in carving. Are you there, James? I thought I saw your name come up, but Jean Paul, what would you say about this one? This is kind of an interesting carving, with especially the grounds underneath his feet. Yeah, it's pretty uh, cute little carving. Got a lot, of, lots going on there. Um, looks like an apple picking day. And it looks like a fall. It looks like he's got. I like the ground. Uh, the looks looks like uh, wood chips or something for grass. Cute little carving. He's happy. He's happy about the uh, apple. You got, I guess. Yeah. So let's pick your own apples. Yeah. Great. Now I I just saw Zenon come on here a few minutes ago. I'm going to back up a little bit. And have Zenon come on and tell us a little bit about what's happening over at the show. I just got to get that back here somehow. There, Zenon. Would you like to speak up for this? Are you there, my friend? Hello, hello, Zenon. Come in, please. <laughs> <laughs> unmute. Yeah, unmute yourself. You're off of mute, but it's got no no video. But maybe you're just uh, having us record it for you. We just mentioned here that the Waterloo Show coming up, the Canadian National Wildfowl Carving Championship, Wood Art in the City. So we're looking forward to that show coming up this next month. Okay, where are we at now? Just to get this. I've got a tribute to Alex Clement. Now I'm going to ask Mike to come into this. Okay. Um, I met Alex uh, uh, through the Thornhill Carving Group, and Alex was our resident carving expert. Uh, Alex would bring uh, carving he was working on, but uh, unfortunately for the years I knew him, he, his hands were um, he was suffering from arthritis in his hands and stuff. He wasn't carving as much, but um, uh, he would spend time he enjoyed coming to the club and, and he'd spend time talking about his family and his and Rita who's here tonight and his three kids and uh show pictures of his grandkids and he was always able to help everybody in the Thornhill group with anything they were carving. And um I only saw that during that time a few of his carvings. But uh after he passed in September, uh I went over to, and Rita invited me over to the house. And uh, these pictures that follow are some of the carvings that I, uh, that are at the house. And that's only a small sample of um, things that uh, Alex had carved. This, um, Alex was an executive coming member. Up like this you mean here. Yeah, yeah. The, this is a, a carving of 26 birds. And apparently it uh, took away third prize. I'd love to see the first and second. No. Um, and the uh, rose on the uh, right there is um, from the um, Richmond Hill Rose Award for the uh, Richmond Hill Mayor's uh, Award. Uh, and he carved a, ro a, ro a different rose for three years in a row. Mayor would ask him to ask different people to do different things. And they asked Alice to do the carving of that. Um, Beautiful. Uh, there's an article uh, about Alex in the current uh, OWCA magazine, which I wrote. Uh, you can get a little more information about him there. Um, but these uh, pictures are just to appreciate some of the uh, extensive and varied abilities he had, his attention to de detail, his uh, wanting to get things just right, uh, and with all the different characteristics. 
So this is Scotchman here on the uh, Piper on the right and our left in the Newfoundland. Fisherman on the right. Just, uh, uh, you this saw is this just on a post, I say, assume, taking the pictures. Did tell us about the one in the standoff? What is that actually happening there? Uh, I guess it's a standoff between the fish and him <laughs> trying to trying to catch that fish. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, 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 as I say, uh, these are um, carvings that I, I don't know a lot about, but uh, these are Alex's. Yeah, good variety. The um, keep going, Ray. Uh, he tried different things. Uh, the this looks like the soapstone, the the loon, and uh, the uh, fox in the. What is his painting? Uh, his attention to detail is always uh, looks good. It's great. Just different varieties. Uh, he was uh, 50 when he uh, got into carving. His father was a carver. And uh, um, there's a, I don't know if there's a picture of this one, but uh, of the uh, um, polar bear that uh, his father didn't finish and now it's finished it and that got him going on different things. But his, uh, he has a great ability to, to uh, do a variety of different uh, character carvings as well as uh, many other styles of, of carving. I love the humor of that one on the left. Checking yeah, it, that piece straight. of wood just isn't straight at all. <laughs> and the flash of the eye there. Um, yeah, the Captain Canuck here, uh, lots of uh, expression in the face and just the whole piece there. And the, the um, he did a number of um, the um, bark carvings on the right. So, mm -hmm. elaborate little house there. Um, the um, <laughs> yeah, the one on the uh, left there, looking back, uh, I'm not sure if you kept the the um, he he did a clay design, and I, I I'm not sure if you cut that picture on out. But there was the picture of the clay. Uh, character that he molded first before he would do the carving i'm not sure how many times he he actually did that with other carvings but um that was the one clay piece that uh we had uh, to do that carving as well so again uh, a lot of people do um their stuff in clay before they uh do a wood carving um i know neil cox uh, uh does that uh, the, mus mus the mus musician on the Right there, conductor. Uh, he looks pretty good. But uh, in addition to th the stuff here, Alex did. Uh, he was uh, did the City of Toronto crest for the new City Hall. He did the peace tree for the Richmond Hill McConaughey Center. He did uh, the Maple Leaf Forever tree that's in the Science Center. Uh, he worked with Neil Cox and uh, completing that. And Neil said he was always interested in promoting wood carving and very enthusiastic about it. And you can tell from his variety of uh, characters here. Oh, very good. Each one seems to have an attitude to the face, see? Eh? Exactly. Eh? Story. The, um, in uh, 20, 2010, uh, the OWCA um, at uh, the Niagara Hamilton Kitchener, uh, I, it was some event. I, I was before my time, but um, there was a number of instructors who did uh, teaching carving, and, and Alex did. Um, um, he did miniature figure carving. Uh, he was he did instruction. I think that got him going on teaching, and uh, he's spent many years teaching uh, with the city of Toronto. A lot of that was uh, small figure carvings. Um, there's actually a couple of worksheets I have mm -hmm. on that if anybody's interested in 
um, small figure, uh, sort of it, they're kind of an, as an introduction for uh, new new carvers. Love the. Uh, I don't. I can't read your name there in the middle. I'll say Blondie. I always said to Alec, why do you keep carving character men? Why don't you do women? So he did her. And I, I said to him, that's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can follow up that comment with something that Mark said. As soon as he started trying to do women, they didn't look like women. He had to really <laughs> work at getting the woman's look on the face. Yeah. The patch of the dress says it all. These are uh, really good uh, carvings. I think uh, he must have had a repertoire of ideas to teach. Yes, eh? It's, uh, and this is only some of the stuff he did. He gave away a lot of his carvings. Mm -hmm. That's the There's that polar bear that is worked on with his father yeah. and the relief carvings and the more of the uh, tree bark. The uh, policeman on the right is one of the last ones he was working on. The uh, head is uh, comes off, and he would that inserts into the neck. Are those cypress knees in the on the left and middle? Yeah, I have no idea. Looks sort of looks like it. Yeah, I believe the one on the left is. I'm not sure about the one in the middle. And this is just, a, I wanted to say, I looked at this with uh, John Paul the other, this morning, and I love the clouds on that one on the left. It's an amazing piece of relief work. Yeah, apparently a number of people did uh, the reindeer with Santa Claus. Uh, but... Uh... Particularly expressive. With How big is that uh, carving on the left? That's uh, probably uh, uh, maybe 14 inches or more. Okay. These uh, were uh, a couple of butterflies that uh, they're hanging on, on the house. Uh, Reed is still enjoying them, I think. And uh, the next one is uh, an award from uh, the OWCA for his contributions. Mm -hmm. Now, just to pause for a minute as we look at this one, uh, I want to say a special thank you to Rita and family. I know in my situation where I carve and then we attend shows and that type of thing, that it's my wife that goes along and sometimes not always interested in being a carver, but she's totally involved in letting me go for the day or whatever. So Rita, you need to be patted on the back for all these carvings, <laughs> hours and hours and hours of carving there that we see in these pictures tonight. And I know that <laughs> there's a terrible hole in your life there today that uh, needs to be filled, but just know that we're there in love with you as carvers, especially appreciating our wives. Very special. Thank you very much. Really appreciate this uh, tribute for Alec. Um, have, what can I say? He's he's missed. I wonder if your if your son is still there. Would he say something too? Would like to make a comment? Are you the quiet type? Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. He also. These are the uh, like the smaller. Yeah, those are the miniature carbs. Yeah, and he had he had dozens dozens of these so i got a couple here with me and um here's another one of the um the uh conductor with his uh you'll see like a lot of his carvings have humor in them so his uh he's dropped his drawers i guess right 
hands are waving. back a little bit. Yeah. You can see his red, red uh, drawers. Um, yeah, no, I guess uh, I just wanted to say that I think carving was a very important part of his life. And now, just to looking at the humor of this was not only stretching high, they're one on the right hand side, but if I'm not mistaken, there's one finger sticking up for the, whoever is leading. <laughs> is that true, or is that just my vision? No, uh, that, I that's think his, that's true. That's his thumb. <laughs> that's his thumb. Yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> that's priceless. So yeah, he talked about carving a lot, and um, especially after he hurt his legs and uh wasn't working then uh it became a very important part of his life um and so thank you to all of you yes thank you well the carvers are a brotherhood and sisterhood a group of carvers that really appreciate each other and as we said before we you know there's never a mistake it's only a new design and all of us carvers, especially doing caricatures, you try to follow a pattern, but you don't always get it just right. Thank you, Rita, for being here tonight. Yeah, thanks you. for uh, sharing Thank all you. those uh, carvings, Rita. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It was beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Great. All the best to all of you. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Bye from Beijing. <laughs> Good night. Yeah, bye from Thornhill. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just uh, ask on the plaque that we just saw, is that computer generated uh, writing? I don't believe so. That was before uh, computers took over, I think. Probably laser. Yeah, it's going to say laser, maybe. Yeah. Okay, yes. I'm just wondering because it is so precise and very neat. Mm -hmm. I guess probably back to 2017. So I don't know how much of that was around. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you. It's a great, great picture. Well, Jacques, are you there? Yes. Hi, everyone. Tell about this brave <laughs> project you got or thing you do. Or is there, maybe you're doing it, but this yeah. uh, a, an unusual knife, not really a, a flex cut. No, not at all. But uh, people who know Lynn Doughty uh, is, a, I think, a famous cover in the U.S. and uh, a lot of videos on the web. And I've watched a lot of them. And he always cars with a utility knife, a very old Stanley utility knife. And here's a video from him where he shows how to modify this old fashioned utility knife to push the blade out to have more blade to carve with and these blade because they're really hard steel they probably a lot of carbon they last for a long time and they're super thin because they're utility blade so they're very good at carving and i tried that but of all my utility knives i could buy at home depot or Kinsen tire they have a very uh, thick neck and I find they scratch the carvings a lot. So I never like carving with them, but they do cut very well. But just recently, a few months ago, Lee Valley came out with this knife and uh, you see it here at the bottom part. And inside, I, I, the picture is quite small, but there's a little knob to lock your blade. And most utility, utility knives, they have two or three knobs so the blade can only go in one position. But this one is only one knob so you could put the blade in any position you want and if you put it in the extended position and uh, there's an inch you don't see it but there's an inch at the bottom so the knife folds back on itself and there's a screw in the middle that uh, tightens the knife together and uh, squeeze the blade like a very tight vise and you see the neck of the knife is very narrow so i find it's very nice knife to carve with and the blade lasts forever I don't, I, I just strap it. I buy these uh, cheap uh, disposable blades and I strap it a little bit, but they last forever. I could carve for hours without uh, strapping. Is it, on the bottom, the right hand side, these are ones that uh, Lee Valley is selling now? That's right. Yeah. So this is Lynn Dottie on the web, and this is what uh, Lee Valley is selling. They have three or four different types from this uh, company out of Germany. And that's the one I picked that uh, as the, I find the best handle for carving for me. 
The one on the left, you mean? Uh, it, it's all the same. So oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. So this is a profile to show uh, where the blade is and uh -huh. how narrow the neck is. And that's the knife open. There's blade storage inside. You could put, uh, you could store a lot of blades. And there's a knob in the middle to uh, tighten, tighten the knife. And it really grabs the blade and hold it tight. The blade does not move, doesn't does not rattle in the knife. So, so uh, I find it very good to carve. Um, and the point is uh, quite sharp, uh, so you could get into corners as well. But if people are familiar with Lin Dari, he does most of his carving and very in intricate carvings with uh, just this type of knife. And if you don't know Lin, I would recommend you search to YouTube and uh, you watch some of his videos. He's a very good carver, hmm. caricature carver. Yeah, I've also seen uh, Lin uh, do that, use that particular knife. I've actually used the one myself. Uh, they are a little bulky, but they do do good rough work. Do you know how much Lee Valley sells these for? This one, I believe, was $29, 29 Canadian dollar. So, I think for a curving knife, uh, it's not too bad. You do have to buy the uh, the blade. It comes with uh, a few blades, but you know, utility knife. You have to buy the disposable blades, and and for people who don't like sharpening, it could be a, a good option too. And, uh, so, do you after it uh, loses its edge or it becomes dull? Do you sharpen this one or you just throw it away? I, I do hone it. So it lasts longer. And also uh, you could flip the blade. So uh, once the top part is dull, you could flip it around and then you use the bottom part. Mm -hmm. So out of one blade, you get two knives mm -hmm. and I hone it as I go. So it lasts uh, longer, mm -hmm. but these blades are quite cheap to buy. And uh, for utility now you could buy uh, different brands uh, like Lowe's or Home Depot, and they tell you like five times harder or or ten times harder or last ten times longer than usual. So so the blades I find are are quite uh, durable. <clears throat> Probably very hard to sharpen, but very durable. They last for a long time. I've I've been using this type of knife for about a year now, and I'd say eighty percent of my knife work I use. This is what I use. And the the big trick is learning how to hone the, the blade. A utility knife blade isn't sharp enough. But once you hone them properly, they're scary sharp. And uh, that's, like I said, 80% of my knife work. That's what I use. Okay. And do you use a knife similar to Lin Dowdy, the old-fashioned uh, old one? Yeah, I, I, you can buy them on, you can't buy them in a Home Depot store. But if you go online... And you look for a Stanley um, non-retractable blade, and it will set you back. I think the current price is five dollars and eighty-nine cents, okay. or sorry, five dollars and forty-eight cents, okay. which is pretty reasonable. Yeah, very good price, cheaper than the Lee Valley one. But I like the handle on that Lee Valley knife. It's uh, it's easier to hold, I think. Yes, I've tried many, many utility knives I've bought at Home Depot, Lee Valley, not Lee Valley, but Canadian Tire, and never liked them. Most of them have a fat neck here, and I find the scored uh, carving. And most of them, the way they are done, like if it's retractable, they don't go out much. And uh, the ones not retractable, they have only one position for the blade, and it's, it's not sticking out far enough to be useful <clears throat> or to be a good carving knife. But this one permits you to retract the blade. Uh, they, they normally have they come with three slots, and you could put it at a further slot, and, and you get a lot of blade to cut with. Uh, I think I do say it here: the extended blade is about three centimeters. So you have three centimeter of blade exposed. I know it as a carpet knife. You can I think you can pick them up at the the restores and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Car uh, yeah. Carpet installer used to use those knife, and sometimes with the hook uh, blade, or roofing people too to cut the mm -hmm. shingles. Yeah. Well, that has a unique uh, 
handle shape and comes with a sheath. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just looking at it on their website here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, watch some Lynn Dowdy's YouTube videos and see how he cars with this. And yeah, it's amazing, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, it would seem when you try to do the flat plane carving, that this would be an ideal knife for that. Mm -hmm. One stroke, it cuts off a whole bunch of wood, but you can keep you accurately hold it so it doesn't mess it up. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, Jock. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Now, if we have any more questions, I guess that Lynn Doughty is a good place to look at that. Ask questions about this particular knife online. And one thing we're going back a lot right now with the Ontario Woodcarver Association, looking at what the future is going to be. And with that, looking back at the 1968-69 kind of time when carving was very rudimentary, it was different, but Thinking of the times at the CNE, when the big show took place is when come some of our carvers met together, start talking about the possibilities of forming a carving group within Ontario. And from that, the Ontario Woodcarver Association became what it, it what it was at that time. I think back to that time that when I looked at I looked online at some of our uh, first editions of the magazine that uh, they put out was a you know the gestetner type of operation where you have a film and you make a, a stencil out of that and it prints out the paper and sometimes they made it on just on a photocopy but it was hand typed and uh, hand drawn and that kind of thing we've gone to the place that come up the fancy magazine today but as i look at that the different kinds of carving that have come evolved out of all of that too is uh, it gets into some very detailed, some fine carving, excellent work. And so as people have developed in their carving from very simple carvings at the very beginning to now make a face look like a face and a woman's face look like a woman's face. It's really amazing how far we've been able to come. And as mentioned to John Paul, when we we're talking about this earlier, that it is something amazing to see how each one of you as carvers in the TNCC have changed from some of the flat carving faces that you had and some weird looks to something that really is quite amazing today. So just a big pat on the back for that. But that kind of introduces my next topic tonight to you. And I'm not sure everybody's going to go this direction, but what I've done is I wrote about this in the magazine that just came out, and that's the AI art. And uh, the fact is that getting intelligent enough to do the printing AI in its place in carving, AI equals artificial intelligence. And actually, that is pretty intelligent, actually, but it's not coming from a human brain directly, but it's from a program in computers that something called algorithms that are written in amazing ways today to say and do things that we can hardly imagine possible. In the magazine, I published pictures on the front cover and talked about how Many people have been sending me pictures of this carving or that carving saying, my son did this, my daughter did that, I did this. But it doesn't really show much except the carving, a great big massive tree carving or a dragon or something of that sort. But when I found out last August that the possibility was that I could maybe make a pattern or an idea for a pattern out of AI art using that as my computer. This next picture shows you two caricatures that I developed with my computer. And how do you do it is the question. You look at the styles of the person, the attitude, the face features and such. A little guy on the left, and this could be any size, but I'm dreaming that maybe I'll do this at about a size four inches high, five inches high, be able to get in tighter detail when I do it to give the expressions and the clothing, the wrinkles and so on in the, on the outfit. The one on the right is distinct. You've probably seen something like that. We'll show you that in a minute here. But how do we do it? We do it by simply using words. And you can see the, the sentence that's written behind this character. And uh, it says the carving from wood of a cartoon style, old Western cowboy with a gun belt and gun in the holster, old cowboy boots, dark background. Now, this picture doesn't show the background because I've taken and removed it so you can see the character better. But what happens then is the computer looks at my words 
thinks a little bit about it and then starts to put it together. And sometimes it comes out just the way I'd like it or pretty close to the way I'd like it. And sometimes it just does some really weird things. It's almost as if it's tired. Please leave me alone. I'm exhausted. I'll just give you this to, to pacify you for a while. So anyway, I'm coming up with this idea of this little character. And if you notice that sentence right there, I want you to see that. In this next slide, it's exactly the same. Uh, well, this picture here. The same sentence exactly, only three letters I put in front of the sentence. C-G-I. Now, I'm not sure you're familiar with that unless you've been in some sort of movie making or know people that are in the movie world. But CGI represents a style of uh, cartoons and caricatures and movie styles. And the one that this represents especially is the Toy Story with Buzz and Woody and all of the toys that are around that are doing their thing. If you've got grandkids, you probably have seen that a hundred times or more. And maybe you simply got caught into Toy Story yourself. But what happens is that character on the right-hand side now has got very thin arms compared to this character. And the thin arms with the bigger hands, skinny legs, big boots, and that look on the face, that's very much like Woody, the cowboy that the boy has in the movie, The Toy Story. So just by simply adding three little letters, it changed the look of the pattern or the idea by simply using words. Now, what I'm thinking about here is to show you something simple that you might try. Now, if you're not interested at all and you've got some aversion towards this, you don't want to be involved in artificial intelligence, so be it. But this is for some that might be interested. How do we do it? Simply by using words in an AI program like Bing Copilot. No. That's kind of an odd word, but Bing is part of Microsoft's development towards AI. And it's actually a search tool. We can go onto your browser, like if you use Edge, which is a Microsoft browser, or the Google one, which is called Explorer, and type in the words Bing Copilot. And you can see in the blue on this screen, that's a string of words, a string of the letters and words that you would put in there to bring up the image that you see below it. And you see the top left-hand side, especially says co-pilot and designer. This is the place you wanna be. On the right-hand side, you see my name and you'll see 2193. And then the word mobile, which is a cell phone kind of thing. You don't need to worry about that part, but the 2193 represents the number of Microsoft points that I have earned in the Microsoft store. Every time I did a search or fill out a quiz that Bing puts out, I earn more points. Sometimes it's 10 points, sometimes five, sometimes 20. And it adds up in the Microsoft account that I have. And I can use that to donate to somebody, which is a unique feature of the computer world. It's You can actually send this over to somebody, a charitable organization, which they will get something out of it financially to help their program. Or I can buy something in the Microsoft store like computer programs, games, and such. And if you'll notice just down below, there's a long strip. It says, it's, it's the question is, you want to see how image creator works? Selects surprise me or then create. And so what I did is I typed that sentence in about the Cowboys and uh, hit create. And it takes about maybe five seconds, 10 seconds sometimes, depending how complicated the image is going to be. And up pops the cowboy. Looks like it's carved out of wood. If I use the word on the side beside create surprise me, it, you get all kinds of weird stuff. I mean, some really strange things. But down below the Explore ideas, these are all ideas that have been created by Bing in the programming that is involved in their background. And you can look through it. You can actually take these pictures and do different things. Now, I really stopped buying greeting cards or sending gifts and that type of thing on my Facebook, from my Facebook, or pasting it on the Facebook, like a birthday card, for instance. You can make it yourself. Write the words in, and it becomes a really, really unique birthday card because it's not made by somebody else. I made it. Now, as I go through this a little bit further, I come down to the next slide. This is a little bit of a close-up. And doing what I talk about, it shows the Bing 
dot com forward slash images forward slash create forward slash. And that's just a close up of the ones that we just looked at. So you can see it a little better if you have to, if you want to go back to the video later on. Now, the top is CGI. If you can read that on the machine that you're on, a carving from a wood, from wood of a cartoon styled old gray horse, very tired looking, tongue hanging out with a well worn saddle. And those are the four images that this offers. So this doesn't cost you any money. You don't have to go in and put a credit card in and buy something. It's simply every day you start, you'll see where this my mouse is moving around. That 10 is there. It starts off each day with 15. And each one of those points of 15 will create 15 different uh, slides or images like this. And actually, there's usually about four in it. So it's four times 15 for the 15 credits for the day. Now, going a little bit further, that's an up close of three of the pictures there. And John Paul could probably do better than this one, his artwork and drawing. But it is an idea to start. Now, it doesn't have an actual pattern, so you can lay out a you know, pattern laid on a piece of wood and cut around it with a bandsaw. But with a little imagination, you can start drawing this side view of this with a tongue hanging out, and you could create a pattern. What I've actually done is I've now photographed, or not photographed, but taken the image, put it onto a, a Microsoft Doc page, and enlarge it by pulling the side of the image to make it bigger to fill the page up and then print it. I don't have a printer at home, so I go to Staples and print it for 63 cents for a color. Or I can do black and white for about 18 cents or something. Then I can cut that little pattern or that picture out and draw around it, especially two cowboys I can do that, and draw around it, and then I've got my pattern to draw, cut out on this bandsaw close to the outside, and then I can start carving it. So I'll go through this very quickly, but coming to this point, could you do this? And the answer to that is yes. Do you need help? I'll help you. If you simply email me, I've come to a point now that I'm teaching about four other people online, and there's no cost to that. I just do it because I love doing this kind of thing to help people in the carving or in the joy of doing AI art. One particular circumstance is a lady we know quite well has a problem with her weight. She's very, very large now, is very unhealthy, is almost a recluse because of her health issues and her weight and so on. She's ashamed to go out. But we've known her very well for a number of years, and so I introduced her to the AI art. She thanked me profusely, saying this has just given her a whole new life. So I'm thankful for that because the AI art does open that door for many people. Now, some people say, well, all you're doing is stealing somebody else's art. No, you're actually using algorithms that may be uh, created by other people at different times, and they put it together to make the picture that you ask. And actually, I can take a prompt, which is, this is what the line is called. When you go on the Bing and you put the prompt in there, and I can do something different. Uh, use somebody's prompt that has already created a piece, but my piece of work that comes out will be different than theirs. The image will be. So the comedy here is when I clicked it the first time, I've got four cowboys that look something like the guy on the left. And when I clicked it again, the machine said, okay, want to have some fun? He put a dog's head on that cowboy. Now, this is something that John Paul did recently with a rabbit. And he mm -hmm. had a rabbit on a, what is a butler, was it, or what? <laughs> no, uh, a cowboy. A co well, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, well, West Wabbit. <laughs> Mary. The idea. Now, John Paul, maybe you want to contribute something. You are the artist. But there's yeah, I, I, uh, I, would, I like I like it, kind of like it. Um especially if you get stuck. Like I get stuck a lot of it, a lot of times and I can see myself using it just to uh, generate some ideas and get the creative bug going. Uh, I, I can see myself using it. If, if you go online and just do a, a free AI art generator, you'll get uh, a number of programs that'll do that. Canva being one of them. But the, the more uh, information that you request in their statement that'll uh change all the the draw the illustrations that they come up with 
But I'd be surprised, Murray, if you can't also just ask the, the program, maybe not this one and from Bing, but program to also do a profile view for you of mm -hmm. front or back of that particular um, image. And it should be able to give you the different sides. Yes, that's true. And I've, I've done that. I just did it with these pictures. But what one of the prompts at the front of the prompt, I would say two thirds side view. And it'll be not complete side view, but not head on either. But it'll be about a 45 degree angle, uh, something that's sort of 30 degree angle from the side of the head. But just simply by putting numbers in to tell the machine exactly what you want, you can change the character. But the issue is right now for myself, and this is the stage I'm at at AI art. I don't always get the same character, the same person, uh, the character that I want, the same image. It'll change the cowboy to make it with a dog's head or something. Murray. Yeah. Now, if if I in, in uh, I'm not big on AI, and I'm not sure I enjoy it, or but it's quite, it's kind of cool. But if I enter the exact same words that you did. Do, do, do they go back and look at our research that we do on the computer or, or will we come up with the same thing, do you think? It's a, a bit of both of what you just said of the two things, from what I understand. Okay. And I've okay. had actually the people that I'm working with have, give them the prompts that I've written. Mm -hmm. and they come up with an image, there'll be a cowboy, it'll look brown and maybe a dark background, but the faces will all be different or the hands or the arms or whatever. And my other my other thing is I, I find re refreshing that they're they're not perfect because uh, when you ask wood carve you don't see any tool marks which I find that refreshing okay. because I'm I'm a bit of a skeptic about this stuff taking over you know but uh, yeah it's it's kind of refreshing that everything is kind of smooth um, they can't they can't uh, duplicate us all the way you know. So anyway, <laughs> that's just my opinion. But Murray, if you asked for it, you might get it. That's right. <laughs> if you if use you the word flat plane mark? carving, you'll get a flat plane look. But the, the oh, but did you ask for one with tool marks? I wonder. No, I didn't. This is just what they automatically gave me, knowing the, that I would, okay, whatever. But yeah, but, uh, but not... I'll tell you part of the story behind this. These two cowboys here. I ended up getting 54 images before I got, I said, this is enough. I have to go to bed. Wow. So I've got them actually in a doc file. I put, I filed, I saved them. So there's one image per page. If you're interested, I can send you the email with that attachment. And you can see all of the, the cowboys that I produced and horses and dogs and whatever. And wow. it's just, it's kind of a real joy to try it out. Because like what, what uh, John Paul and I were talking about, is it triggers an idea in you. This is not the finished image. The in image finished is going to be the one that I get my knife onto the wood, yeah. start to change it and make a mistake. Either glue that piece back on or change it and put his nose a different size or something of that sort. So it's got the creativity still in me. It's not in the machine. Now, it's only an idea generator. Okay. Oh, okay, so you can't go back and say, okay, picture number three. Uh, I changed my mind. Uh, I want to give him two guns. Uh, you can if you go into something a little higher than Bing. Oh, okay. Wow. There's something okay. called Mid Journey. It just I, I, I've gone to peek into it, and what they're doing is requiring you to put to buy about a twenty dollar amount, wow. for so many credits for a month or two months or something, and then you can start saying, "I would like to have the ears bigger. I'd like to have the nose longer." And it, it will do it because it's a program that has a finer touch to it. But for the purpose of what we're talking about tonight, Bing is free. Bing is easy. And Bing is free fun. Is good. Free is good. <laughs> free is always good for me. <laughs> <laughs> I joined something called Night Cafe. And that's another area that's uh, one that you, uh, you actually pay. I think I paid about $20 Canadian for three months worth of Credits that they offer, which is 100 credits per month. That's 100 images. And that's a lot of work when you sit down to start thinking through and try to get an image of that. But then what happens at Night Cafe, they have challenges and they give you a word for that day or expression that day. 
you try to make an image and you submit it into their program and you'll get maybe 130,000 different votes coming in and possibly get some credits for that because if you get really high and do a good image, they give you 100 more credits free. There's a top 5%, top 10%, top 20%. And at first I started off, I wouldn't show anybody what I did, but after I got into this thing further, I started winning some top 5% and 10% and 20%. I just have a joy doing it. So that's the other part of it is just, this is fun to do. Well, it's all AI generated. Yeah. And I just turned 80. So I haven't got a lot of time left to go buy the paint, get the canvas and wait, let it dry and hope somebody will see it. My kids mm -hmm. will have to deal with it after I'm gone. And it's not very good that way. <laughs> Anyway, that's what we're presenting tonight, folks. So I just want to say again, appreciate Rita coming and being a part of this tonight. Each one of you that contributed, it's been a real joy to work with you tonight. And say, uh, is there any more questions or thoughts? Please write to Mark or myself. My question for you, Mary, if I may. Do you know if any of these apps for AI permits you to rotate the character in print so that you could use it for the bandsaw cutting? So if you uh, use, there's... Uh, there's hundreds of them coming up. This has become so popular. One group said that in one month's time or in one week's time, there's been a hundred thousand people join that group because of the excitement. It staggers your mind what's, what they're coming up with now. And so getting there, you're just at the ground floor when you start to do something like in Bing, you got to be careful because it can be addicting, but you forget how to carve after a while too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah just of, put in a free AI generator, art generator, and you'll get the different ones. And then any of these, you can you can copy the and save the, the pieces. And you can yes. rotate them and print the face profile. Yeah. Okay. And what about posing? Can you change the pose they are in? Yes, just, it, it's, it's all related to the information that you write into about oh, okay. the more okay. specific you get, the more... Um, It'll try and meet what you're what you're asking for. Okay, because instead of using clear models like was mentioned in this uh, four minute time, I use uh, apps on the iPad for posing, artist posing software, okay. and then I could print the the face or the side of the of the character after I pose it in the position I need, the, and then I use that for the bandsaw. Right, but this one would give yeah. me a lot more uh, feature, a lot more. I, I don't know, like when we first started the TNCC, True North Caricature Carvers, it was just an idea of uh, three or four people talking about it, and now it's growing into a, something that's almost worldwide. So what I'm suggesting here that maybe if some of you want to email me, and we'll start sharing ideas back and forth by email and which program we're using, uh, it could eventually become something bigger for wood carving world for us. I don't know if we'll get to the point of having a Zoom session, but it is possible to do that, too. If you're interested, email me, murray.lincoln at gmail.com. <laughs>